My dudes, today we have a lot to talk about when it comes to Nikkei, and I'm going to try my best, right, to get all of this, like, out the way, right? I, I'm so pumped for what is coming with uh, all the stuff going on. So we're here to talk about the new update that is coming along, and I'm going to go ahead and move my fat face up here. We're going to go to this event. Friends as close as a tied ribbon. This this event is actually huge and it comes with a lot of stuff, which I was actually pretty shocked by. I did not expect a lot of the stuff that's coming for this event to be coming for this event. Like there's no other way to put it, right? Um, but before we get into that, make sure to hit that like, comment, subscribe, go ahead and uh, slap that <laughs> notification bell. I, I don't want to ever say that again. Don't make me say that. Um, but yes, also check out my ever wonderful sponsor, Gamer Subs. Use code Tystra for 10% off. We have a huge sale happening this Friday, 3 p.m. Eastern, the Christmas in July sale. I won't go into too many details, but there's going to be a lot of goodies that you could get for free if you make certain purchases. But without any further delay, let's talk about this event. So the first things I want to go over, right? And we're going to pause my music here, right? We're going to pause the music. Because I want to talk about this trailer here. Commander, this trailer is, is bonkers. These are, this is the trailer for chapter and 31 and 32. Zero. Let's go ahead and take a look Come at this. On. Let's move. We're expecting to and see Grave. Think that. And we're working with Absolute. Because the chance of encountering pilgrims and heretics is high. Very high, indeed. And Rappy's in Red Hood form, by the way. I want to make sure to reiterate that. If you look at what Rappy's in right now, she's getting pushed back in her Red Hood form. That is huge. Because Rappy was kicking butt on, you know, Indivilia, kicking butt on, you know, freaking Ni Nihilister, kicking butt on Chatterbox. And doing a lot of crazy stuff, and she's being pushed back right here. Rappy, no! No, no. Nobody move, please. And this what exactly is your plan? Oh my god. Look at her. Oh my Lanta, bro. She's so <laughs> My guess is that obviously this is a new pilgrim or a heretic. Um, I, I'm probably going to say Pilgrim, and the only reason why I'm going to say, well, I don't know, it's tough, man. I want to say Pilgrim because even with this, it doesn't look like she has super ill intent. It's the same thing with Grave. We looked at Grave in chapters uh, 29 and 30, and Grave didn't have ill intent. She just didn't like humans. My guess is that this new, like, Nikkei is the same way. So I don't know. It's tough to tell, but God, is she hot. Holy crap. <laughs> and there's the full look right there. She is absolutely insane looking. And I want to know what these, like, grippy hands, like, how strong these things actually are. Not, no, no weirdness in it, you know? <laughs> no, no Cooper Bay in this one, right? <laughs> then we see the commander use his fist, which is pretty crazy as it is. But then, hear this. My name is Anachiro. I got goosebumps the moment that I heard that. I was like, oh, Anashiro is actually going to wake up. So, so many things going on with chapters 31 and 32. It's, oh my gosh, it is so insane. All the stuff that's going to be happening in just those two chapters. I just finished chapter 30, right? So if you haven't done, if you haven't finished those chapters, I highly recommend that you do if you're able to. Chapters 31 and 32 are going to be absolutely bonkers, bro. I am so pumped. I am so, so pumped for this chapter. Um, but that's, the bi that's, in my opinion, the biggest news coming from this, right? But we also got, of course, stuff about Aine here. We're going to go ahead and let her work right now. School Circle Aine. So she's a sniper. Pretty all right. Um, now, from my understanding, Aine is actually going to be on the... Uh, the actual, uh, I'm going to go ahead and mute the music just so that way I don't get in troubles. Uh, but yes, Aine, I think, is going to go into the actual standard banner after this. So uh, for me, I'm not, like, too excited. The burst animation is kind of cool. Um, but 
outside of that her kit is very uh strange in my opinion right so she is a burst three attacker i'm gonna move myself back down over here hope you guys don't mind that uh burst three attacker right which i was hoping for a burst one but it is what it is uh she is electric code skill one uh activates when she enters the battle and only affects herself she summons four near feathers uh activates when burst skill ah Activates when entering burst skill stage three and affects only self. She's going to boost her attack by 70% for 10 seconds. Now, uh, the skill feathers are kind of like their own thing. Uh, you see that in skill two, right? Activates when near feather is summoned, affects one random enemy unit. Near feather attack deals 90.81% of final attack as true damage. Uh, and then activates when attacking with full charge, affects self, charge damage up by 80% for one shot. Now, that means that she's going to really, really be uh, needing that, you know, uh, what is it? Char charge attack, basically. She's going to need that for her actual uh, overload gear. Uh, because if you can get that final charge attack up, like, your charges will max out faster. So, ultimately, it looks like she could be good. She could be really good. I don't think she's going to be replacing Red Hood anytime soon as the uh, burst three of sorts even though red hood can be any burst but i think that she might be cool in general um but once we get to the burst skill uh it has a cooldown of 40 seconds affects self summon six near feathers true damage is increased by 55.3 percent for 10 seconds charge damage is, is increased by 140 percent or 140.68 percent for 10 seconds and then affects 10 enemy units with the highest defense deals 300.02 percent of final attack as true damage so she has some uh difference or not different she has a lot of potential but um i don't know if she's going to be breaking any molds here um definitely going to be one of those ones that will be fun to try out but overall i'm going to be skipping i think that everybody kind of should as well with the collab around the corner and all that we have a lot of stuff to look forward to now let's go ahead and move on i didn't talk about this uh until like today when i did my shorts uh but Summer Anise and Summer Aqu or yeah, Summer Helm. I almost said Summer Aqua. What is this, Konosuba? Uh, Summer Anise and Summer Helm are coming back, which does confirm that there's not going to be a second Summer unit, right? There's not going to be a second one. And that's perfectly fine. I totally, totally understand that because it would be tough in the sense of, like, so many things going on. And I think they do kind of want to, like, ease into the collab that's going to be happening. So, uh, yeah, I think that this is actually a good idea. If you haven't picked up Summer Anise or Summer uh, Helm and you're looking forward to picking them up, I hope you get them. I'm not summoning for them because I already have them personally. So, uh, but yeah, I thought that was pretty cool. Uh, we are getting two different login events, right? Uh, one of them is for your daily login, which happens normally with every new unit that comes out. So pretty standard. We're going to be getting 10 vouchers after seven days. Nikkei is very generous, in my personal opinion, when it comes to this stuff. Uh, so very excited for that. The only thing that I saw was the karaoke ticket. And I can't remember if that, like if these type of things, right, are to, the stuff that's going to be used as extra, um, attempts at story mode stages. So if that's on the third day, that's kind of okay. Because, you know, by the time you get done with the third day of the new event, you should already have all the stages cleared, right? And then we're going to move on to the next login event, which is going to go into our next thing as well. But this is going to be the sunny date uh, login event. And the thing with this one is I can't tell if this is actually going to be the event or it's not going to be the events login, obviously. But like this is going to be an extra event login. Uh, and why this is important is that we are getting a oh, wrong one, wrong one. What the heck, man? We're getting a brand new Tia skin now. I have my own things about this because I'm not, I'll be honest with you, chat. I'm not into blondes and Tia is probably, Tia's, listen, Tia's thick. We know that, but I'm not into her, to be honest. I, I'm really not super into her. I, I've said this to Rujo. I've said it to a bunch of my Nikkei friends. I'm not into Tia. A lot of people are, but I'm just not. Naga looks way better in my personal opinion. Um, But this skin, I think is a lot better than the default Tia skin. I'll say that right now. And they, there's no cap in that. I think this skin is way better. And it's adorable. But Tia's just not for me. But it's a free skin. And that's ultimately what's important. Uh, I think that that's a wonderful thing that they're doing. So big shout out to Shift Up and Nikkei. You guys are freaking awesome. Now, 
there's these developer notes, but I want to get into those last, right? So let's talk about the last thing that's coming with this event specifically, that the story event, See You Again, is going to archives. And I think that is a big, big up. I love the fact that they continue to bring these events to the people who were not, or the commanders, let's say commanders, right? That were not able to actually play these events back then. I know the feeling, I was the same way. If they would only bring the Chainsaw Man stuff back, I would be 100% happier, right? But that's not gonna happen, right? Right? But anyways, see you again is uh, going into the archives. I think that's a big up for them. Uh, this event was actually kind of fun. I really dug it. I loved uh, the, you know, Stuff going on with a niece, right? Because niece is, oh my god, a niece is hot. Um, but you get the barbecue event, which I thought was pretty fun too. So a lot of cool things coming from this. Now, let's dive into this. I'm gonna try my best to get through this as quickly as possible because there is a lot of stuff to talk about, a lot of stuff that we've already kind of talked about, and we're gonna skip through that. But there's some things that need to be talked about as well. Uh, content development progression update. Uh, we hope they recently updated profile card decorations and titles features uh, provided sat satisfactory content for commanders. For me, I thought it was a cool little thing. I've decorated all my stuff in the summer stuff, so I'm pretty excited for that. Um, in the last developer notes, I briefly explained the contents of the schedule of the update. Today, we will focus on the development status of these contents, right? So simulation overclock official season. So the first official season is basically going to be starting here pretty soon, right? Uh, simulation room overclock is structured into 12 week seasons with the next season starting immediately at the as the current one ends. It is designated to allow you to acquire a skill upgrade material every two weeks continuously. Each season provides designated stage levels and options. However, some options change every two weeks. So we encourage commanders to decide wisely when to challenge the season records. The recommended combat power for stages has increased compared to the beta season adjusted to align with the recent modification equipment updates. Therefore, the actual difficulty level is similar to that of beta season two. Now I played beta season two. Um, I'm a plebe. I only got to like, I think level 11. So if that's the case, and now that I'm stronger, I should be able to do even better. And I'm hoping that's the case because I want more stuff, right? And as previously announced, please note that the records of the beta season will be removed from profiles at the start of the official season of Simulation Room Overclock. Uh, we also got Anomaly Interception, which I think is a big one, right? So, Anomaly Intercep Interception introduces bosses of higher difficulty levels, such as Combat Level D, Level S, and Special Anomaly Combat feature boss like Ultras and Indivilia unseen in previous combats. The content is designed to be specifically challenging with a maximum Nikkei level limit set at hundred this is going to be a toughie or at least i hope it is because i want to work for the stuff so it's probably going to be just like simulation room where it's going to be a seasonal thing right uh as the level of difficulty is high instead of rotating bosses you will be able to select and challenge bosses directly which is big moreover we anticipate uh, we anticipate offering higher level rewards compared to special anomaly interception, allowing you to strengthen manufacturer equipment and modification equipment options more actively. So this is going to be help you level up faster, right? Anomaly interception is scheduled to be updated in August as planned. So please look forward to it. Furthermore, we will carefully listen to your feedback even after the update to ensure there are no inconveniences. So August is when this is going to happen. And this updates about like the new updates going to go live here in about a day. So it's not going to be too long before we see it. Probably the next update when we go into the collab, but who knows? Uh, Champion Arena, which is another uh, seasonal thing that they're working on. Uh, development of cha uh, cha uh, Champion Arena content has been progressing smoothly, but more time uh, than planned it, uh, may be required for QA to ensure higher content completeness. While a definite... Yeah. Definitive delay is scheduled, has not been confirmed. The current schedule is quite tight and that the possibility that the update may occur after September. If there is a delay in the update schedule, we will confirm it through developer notes or official channels. For surface content, initial planning has been progressing and we will begin prototype development. So we're not going to see Champions Arena until September, most likely, which is fine. I think that's not a bad idea. Um, so... Probably uh, big things coming with that. I don't know if Champions Arena was in the game before. I know that it was like in there, but I don't know if anybody ever played it. So if it was, let me know in the comments down below. So then that way I know. 
Uh, Harmony Cube level expansion. We plan to expand the level of Harmony Cubes through the September update. As the Harmony level expands, cube ability skills and cube equipment slots will also expand. We are currently reviewing the appropriate level of expansion, which or while the exact expanded cube level has not been determined, please note that we plan to expand the minimum of six cube slots. Pretty dang big. Pretty dang big, right? Big pogs. I dig that. Uh, favorite item release cycle change. So this one I think is huge. And I've, I've read this before and I love this change. And maybe not a lot of people will agree with me and that's perfectly fine. But I love this change. So let's talk about it. Current favorite item release plan was to update the character's one favorite item every two months. However, based on your feedback from the recent survey, we plan to change the favorite item cycle to approximately three releases within about six months. So it means one release every two months. So I think that's good, right? Or it's, it's basically the same thing as what they're saying was to update the character's one favorite item every two months however based on your feedback in the recent survey we plan to change the favorite item release cycle approximately three releases within about six months so it could be that they release one in the first month and then two in the sixth month or it could be you know like two or one 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 every two months or two and one it's basically interchangeable so i think that works because then it's a lot more flexible. You have more time. Like, let's say if they do the one in the beginning and then they do two later on for like a special event. Um, I think that gives more time to get the other stuff done. I know that people might argue and say, no, that's not entirely the same because yeah, it's still one every two months on a technicality. But at the same time, I do like that they're at least trying approximately three releases within about six months because then like, again it's interchangeable on how it works right though i would say i would say that they should have done uh one every three months personally so that way i have more time to catch up because <laughs> i i only have axias done well not completely done but i have axias so uh we at goddess of victory nike will always listen to the opinions of the commanders and do our best to make it a better game we would like to express our sincere gratitude to the many commanders who provided their valuable feedback through the service uh we already know about the new main scenario uh chapter release because we just talked about that and then of course we have the last of the developer notes right here with the archives edition being uh the uh see you again and then acpu freeze will be added to the archives in august so i think that's one that i didn't get to do i might be wrong on that but overall, this update for Nikkei is big. It's a big update. And I did not expect it for Aine. I expected this for when the other stuff comes out, which makes me think that there's going to be way more stuff coming as time goes on, right? So I'm pretty excited for this update. Let me know in the comments down below what you're most excited for with this update and future updates to come in August and September. Would love to hear y'all's opinions. By the way, uh, just as a side note, because I do have some... Nikkei watchers or Nikkei players on this channel. And I would just like to say one person that inspired me to really do Nikkei content outside of my friends was this guy, Purix. And the reason why I'm pulling him up is because this guy deserves a lot more recognition. Um, he's such a dope ass dude, right? And he does a lot of Nikkei lore. And I watched a few of his videos. There's some stuff I haven't watched, like his interviews, which I need to catch up on. I feel really bad. But his lore. And recapping the lore is fantastic. So if you haven't done so already, subscribe to him. Like, do it. I'm going to provide his link down in the uh, description below. Um, he's way bigger than me. So it's not like he needs my help in any way, shape, or form. But I wanted to show my appreciation for other Nikkei content creators. Um, anyways, y'all, that's going to be it for today. Love you all to death. And as always, we will catch you in that next video. Please take care and be safe.